Hi, thanks for joining me today. My name is Rob, and if you've been watching this channel at any length, you'll know that I'm putting together various costumes and the gear for it. Uh, Star Wars costumes, Indiana Jones costumes, and others. And today we're going to be opening up some indie gear. I have a belt, I have a holster, and I have a gun. So let's take a look. While doing research and assembling the items I purchased, I found it difficult to find on-screen reference images of the holster and gun from the two films that featured the Webley firearm. Now that's Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls. The holster is obscured by Indy's shirt and jacket, and when he pulls the gun, it's only for a couple of scenes. Okay, so here we go. So this is the belt, Todd's costumes, I believe that's long enough to fit a big guy like me, and that's the buckle, basically a belt, go for the holster. Now this is for the Webley guns. Nice and new, could use a lot of weathering. Same with the belt, I just wear them to get better. So the thing we gotta know about, we know that it's a dark brown holster. We know that it's a dark brown belt. Um, gun belt, that is. And what I did was I bought a Denex Webley um, I wanted a Mark 6 which is what Indie Gear claims is the gun that they that, that's used on screen. Uh, however, they also mentioned that it perhaps is really the Webley Green or which is really the Webley government issue. So, looking online, finding a replica of the Webley Mark VI, it was very difficult. I could not find one at a decent price. So I settled for a Mark IV, which most people tell me looks the same as the Mark VI. Let's go ahead and take a look. Typical Denix box. Now, Denix, as you know, are repl they re replicate. Uh, weapons from throughout the centuries and they're made out of mostly zinc not steel so anybody who's interested in purchasing purchasing uh, a Denix Webley looks like this now the one thing I know it's not going to do is break open like uh, like a normal like a normal gun and I know that this is a single action not a double action and I'm also aware you know because it is supposed to be a non-firing weapon, uh, it wasn't going to break open, so I wasn't really expecting that. And of course, because it comes from other parts of the world, it really comes with this orange marker so those people don't shoot you. Now, it doesn't have the Webley markings on it, but as, as a pistol, 
for the holster. Let's see how well does it fit. And that's what it fits like. Now, when it comes to prop guns or prop blasters or prop anything like that, I'm looking more for the look as opposed to the actual working of it. I'm not too concerned that it doesn't break open. I'm not too concerned about anything else. I just want it to look like the gun. If I have to go ahead and make some alter, alter, um, alterations to this, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I know for a fact that with the, this, I'm going to figure out what I have to do to kind of scuff it up. And with the belt, you know, just constantly wearing it as an everyday belt, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing, will we'll do enough, I believe, to actually uh, weather it. Now the gun could use some bluing. And according to the pictures I've seen, it looks pretty much a lot like this. There is a little bit of difference in the color, but as a prop weapon that's going to be shown off in my house, I'm not too concerned. Um, it's kind of heavy. Uh, I don't know how much it weighs, but I'll figure that out. So let's go take a look and see if it actually fits. So what I noticed about this replica was that there was a little bit of play between the handle and the frame and the barrel. So I was looking at the screws that would, I guess, serve as a hinge. So I started loosening the screws. At a certain point, I was thinking that the barrel should break. As the screws were mostly out, I noticed something. <laughs> the screws were slightly off center. I guess they did that for legal reasons, I guess. So I just removed one of the screws and tightened the remaining screw. This allowed the gun to break open, which is how a revolver is loaded. A pleasant surprise. The next step was to re-tighten the remaining screw. However, then it became too tight, so I ended up backing it off a slight bit. So here it is. This is the gun belt, the holster, and the Webley. The Webley Mark IV, not the Mark VI. Now, I chose this particular weapon, or this particular re replica, mostly because it was the easy one available. I couldn't find a Mark VI. I couldn't find a Mark, uh, the actual Mark, uh, uh, or Webley Green, or Webley Government is what it's really called. So I settled for this one. It's very similar in looks. Uh, the one thing, you know, maybe a little bit different, and actually it's about the same, is the, the actual sight on the front sight. And of course, you know, getting rid of this orange thing. If I leave the orange thing on there and put a zip tie, I probably could get away taking this to a uh, convention. But that's not my real goal with these type of weapons. I really don't like to carry a weapon out and about. And the holster, I'm not quite used to these brown, you know, cover the gun holster. I'm used to a Kydex, actually. And of course the belt is a belt. I mean, the nice thing about uh, this particular belt is that I can actually use it on a day-to-day -day basis and weather it that way. Um, now, tell me what you think. Was this a good buy, this Denex? Could I have gotten something better? Was there something better out there? 
Is there a better uh, holster that I could have got other than what I got off of eBay? This is an eBay holster, a military arms, uh, you know, surplus place. And, you know, so tell me what you think. Leave your comments below. Like if you like this video, of course. Hit the notification button if you want to see more. And most importantly, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.